Hi, this is Peter from the DJ Podcast. In this video, we're going to be looking at advanced MIDI mapping in Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2. More specifically, we're going to be looking at interaction modes, which is the way that the buttons and knobs on your MIDI controller affect Tractor Pro 2's software controls. So what I've done is I've mapped some controls from Tractor Pro 2 to my MIDI controller. And by going through them, we're going to be taking a look at the different mapping detail options that you have in the software. So our first control is pretty simple. It's an on off button for FX unit one. So the first thing that I want to look at is interaction modes. Interaction modes vary by the command and the control type. So depending on what type of control you have in the software and what kind of control you have on the hardware, you're going to be given different options. The first type of interaction mode that we have is toggle. You can think of toggle like an on off switch. So right now I have FX unit one on off map to my MIDI controller. And if I go ahead and press this button, you'll see that it turns the effect on and I can press it again to turn it off. Where toggle is an on off behavior, you can have the second interaction mode, which is hold. So I'll go down to interaction mode and I'll change it to hold. Now in this behavior, it's very similar to the toggle, except that you have to hold down the button for as long as you want it to take effect. So you can see that the effect is off currently can then hold this button to turn it on and then when I release it immediately turns off. This is good if you want to do momentary effects so if you want effects to just come in and out really quickly you can use a hold command. So now let's go down to the next type of interaction mode which is going to be direct. Now direct provides a one-to-one -one ratio from the control to the command. As I said before interaction modes vary by the command and the control type. And direct has a lot of different usages depending on what individual MIDI control you're actually mapping. So for something like an on off switch, you're going to have both of those two options available to you. You can see underneath the button options section that we have set to value and currently it's set to zero. You'll usually find that zero is set to off and one would be set to on. Anywhere in the middle would be some form of degree in between. So for example, if I want to have a button that simply turns the effects unit on, and as all it does, I can simply go and click and drag to then set that value to one. So now when I go and press this button, you'll see that it turns the effects unit on. If I press it again, you'll see that nothing changes because all that button is doing is setting the effect unit to on. If I then set it to zero, I could then press to turn it off. As we move through this video, you'll see that the direct interaction mode really provides a lot of flexibility. So you need to make sure that you check it for each individual type of control that you're using. So that was how direct can work with a button where it can go to one particular value. But what about a knob? So we're going to go down to our second control here. And here we have the dry wet adjust for FX unit one. So I can go ahead and move this fader and you'll see that the dry wet on FX unit one simply goes up and down. Right now the interaction mode is set to direct. So again, it provides a one-to-one -one ratio with the particular command. So as you can see, it's up at the top and the dry wet is all the way to the right. If I pull it down to the bottom, the dry wet will be all the way to the left. The same also applies for a knob where the entire range of the control affects the command. You'll notice in this mode, we also have two additional options. The first is soft takeover and the other is invert. So let's take a look at soft takeover. Soft takeover deals with the issue of a physical control being set to a different value than what is set in the software. With soft takeover enabled, the physical control won't affect the software until it and the software control value become the same. So let's take a look at an example of how soft takeover works. First, I'm going to go ahead and enable soft takeover. Right now you can see that the dry wet knob is all the way to the left and the fader that is assigned to it is all the way down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mouse to change the value of the dry wet knob in the software to around 50%. What you'll notice is that when I adjust the fader on my MIDI controller, it won't actually take effect until it reaches about 50% or the value that is in the software. So let's take a look at that. So you can see that I'm moving it up a little bit, no change. Move it up some more, no change. Move it up, keep moving it up, and then right about 50% is where the change occurs and now I can adjust the value. So again, this deals with the issue of having the physical control being set to a different value than the software one. This is really important if you're gonna be mapping something like an effects unit where you can be swapping through presets and having the 
knob values on the software changing a lot without actually having anything reflected on the MIDI controller. So now let's take a look at invert. Invert just changes the orientation of the control. So for a fader, up becomes down and down becomes up. And for a knob, it would be left becomes right and right becomes left. So before where the dry wet was assigned to a fader and as you move the fader up, the dry wet goes to the right. Now it'll be the opposite. So as I move it up, you'll see that it goes to the left. And as I move it down, it goes to the right side. So now let's look at another way that you can use the direct interaction mode. So now we're going to go to our third command, which is the Q type selector. The Q type selector command will allow you to change the Q type of whatever Q you're currently set to. And with the direct control, what you can do is have it set to a particular value. So if we go down here to the button options, we can click this drop down menu and you see that we are presented with all of the different Q types that are available in Tractor Pro 2. By setting this button to direct and then setting it to grid or say, fade in, that means that when we have a cue point highlighted and we press the button, that cue point will be set to a fade in cue type. Our next control is knob one for FX unit one. And for this, we are going to be looking at the relative interaction mode. The relative interaction mode is primarily used for endless encoders, which is why you have the rotary encoder options. You'll see that they have both sensitivity and acceleration. The reason that this is important is because if you're using a rotary knob for something like track selection, you can adjust the acceleration and sensitivity to have it go faster the faster that you actually move that knob. Now while I don't have any rotary encoders on this particular MIDI controller, I can still show you how the sensitivity works. So with direct mode, it would take the entire range of the fader to adjust from left to right on the dry wet knob but I can go ahead and adjust this rotary sensitivity to something like 242%. And now you'll see that it is much more sensitive to every move that I make on the control. So for this, we're gonna be looking at knob one for FX unit one, which in this case is a high pass filter on a reverb. You can see that on my controller, it is all the way at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply pull this down and you'll see that I only need to go a little bit of the ways to already go all of the way on the command in the software. And that's because the sensitivity is much higher. If I was to move this below 100%, you'd see that even if I go the entire range of the fader, that it only gets to about 40% of the value in the software. So going on to our next command, we have loop size selector. The loop size selector adjusts the size that you have set for a loop, which would ordinarily be done using a mouse in this section. Right now, we've got the interaction mode set to increase. This is pretty simple. All it does is it increases the value of the mapped command. So right now our loop size is set to eight, but if I go ahead and press the button, it simply increases it to the next particular value. If I went ahead and set it to decrease, you'd see that it then decreases the value. We can also set it to auto repeat, which means that we can simply hold the button and it will repeat that decreasing value over time. The last interaction mode is reset. Now the reset interaction mode simply resets the command value to its default state or position. So if I go ahead and press this button, you'll see that the low pass filter on the reverb goes back to the preset value for this particular effect. If I went back to our loop size selector command and change the interaction mode to reset and then press the button, you'd see that it goes back to the default value of four. So that's an overview of the interaction modes that you can adjust in Native Instruments Tractor Pro 2. If you like this video, please subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash the DJ podcast. And check out our other video tutorials at our newly redesigned website at the